Hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name's Jason Newland and this is Boring Objects. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Now the point of this podcast is for me to talk to you about a boring object or subject and you can relax feel calm and loose and let go of all the other stuff in your life and as I talk my boring voice will just send your mind to sleep through boredom and you'll feel more relaxed now even though this is called boring objects some of the objects, subjects, whatever that I discuss, would not be boring to a lot of people. But basically, it's just it should really be called me being boring, talking about something, whatever it may be. So today, what shall I talk about? Um, let me think. Hmm. I'm going to talk about beds. Talk about beds. That's what I'm going to talk about. Now, I'm 51 years old. And I only sound about 12. Oh no, I sound very young. But I am indeed very ancient Um, I'm so old when I fart I actually fart dust it's true I'm so old but 51 and I've slept in quite a few beds over the years and I'll just let you know there might be background sounds which is out of my control because Unfortunately, there are other human beings around, uh, so I can't control their big, loud gobs, or from my neighbour from slamming his door continuously, almost as if he's trying to put together some kind of drum beat or something. He's uh, always he's, he slammed his door and it shakes my flat. It's like a little mini mini pretend earthquake I say that but I've not really experienced an earthquake thankfully but there was a bomb went off back in 2000 and no 1996 a bomb went off in Docklands and it shook the whole of the east end of London and sh- I mean, shook and there was a big loud roar so that's probably the closest I've ever been to Uh, even close to that kind of experience and the whole building shook and we went outside and everyone all the other neighbours were coming out as well going what was that and uh, we said we don't know what was that someone else came what was that we just said we just told the other neighbour we don't know someone else would come and say what was that I said look is anyone listening to us we said we don't know and uh, then my, my neighbour's daughter came out and said, what was that? And the next door neighbour said, where were you? We've already had this conversation. And uh, yeah, it was very weird. And it really was a case of looking at the news to find out. It, it was it was clear it was very serious. It was a, stuff like that doesn't happen, you know, for no reason it it was an explosion of some kind I thought maybe maybe our government would do nuclear testing uh, underneath the city again but uh, no it wasn't that it was uh, a boom a boom had gone off in the Docklands which was in East London uh, where the docks used to be 
hence the word Docklands, which is now kind of the hub of the city. Um, but it didn't used to be. It used to just be very a very smelly area with, you know, from all the horrible decaying water. Oh, it was, oh, it was proper pongy. Honestly, when they built houses and flats there, um, as they were building up the area, no one could have their windows open because of the smell of the of the river, because it was so ping pongy. It really was. It was awful. I tell you, it was awful for them, not for me, because I didn't live there. Uh, I just found it funny because I was young back then, and I had no kinds of. Uh, empathy in me I, I, I didn't understand that other people could have feelings and <laughs> I didn't care either no not much has changed so yeah I I've been in a lot of beds slept in a lot of beds over the years and I've moved house probably over 50 times since I was born, maybe 60 times, you know, it's been quite a few times, and I suppose my first bed was in ty- inside my mum's tummy, you know, I slept there for nine months, so I do wonder, I mean, was it a really big bed, as I started, to, you know, my body started developing into a body, or was it, you know, did I have to sleep on the same bed from when I was like a tiny embryo to being you know, nine months old? I mean, that explain why babies are curled up because they, they can't they can't stretch out on the bed because it's not big enough. Maybe. So yeah, I uh, I was born, and uh, the first bed I don't remember what my first bed was. I do have a recollection, a little recollection of sleeping in a cot, listening to Gary Glitter singing I Love You Love. It was like, I love you love, she loves you too love, I love you love me love. And it was a big hit, but I was too young to really know who he was or anything, but I remember the song very clearly I don't know why but I do and then I think I slept in there's one bed that I slept when I was living with my mum and my brothers and it was a bunk bed so I, I think I probably slept on the bottom of the bunk bed because the oldest brother would normally sleep at the top, I think. And I think so, anyway. I remember that. Because in that, I remember there was a party going on outside. the Not outside the house, but outside. I was in the bedroom and it was in the living room. And I was seeing the, the, the wallpaper moving around. So I got scared and I went out into the, the living room to tell my mum and her and everyone else that was there found it hilarious so you know I remember that and then after that the bed I slept in was in a dormitory in a children's home run by the Catholic Church with nuns yeah nuns and it must have been one two three four five six seven it must have been 12 mate, or more beds in there. Maybe 15, 20, I don't know. There's quite a few beds. Either side of the room. And it was enough. I think it was like a little wardrobe. And uh, a bedside. Like cabinet thing. And then the next bed was there. So there was, there was lots of beds in that. And it was a big room. And next to the room was a bathroom. With, you know, toilets and sinks and stuff. And they were just standard beds. Um, I don't remember much about them. 
just a normal bed. But we all had we all had our own beds. And I think my bed was near a window because when I went there for the first day, I had a can of Coke. And I put it on the windowsill. And one of the ladies said to me, uh, I wouldn't leave it there, someone would probably steal it. The nun laughed and I laughed. I uh, didn't know what I was laughing at, but I laughed anyway because I wanted to build rapport with her and um, you know, get some money in the bank early on, you know. It didn't work. But anyway, I went, went around, got the tour of the place, came back, my can of Coke was gone. So yeah, it wasn't a joke. So there was a windowsill there. But I imagine some of you are listening to this thinking, oh, we don't want to hear about the windowsill, Jay. We want to hear about the beds. This is, this is about beds. We were really looking forward to hearing about the beds. Windowsill's not really, it's, it's a distraction. If if nothing else is a distraction, please come and get back to the beds. So okay. Fair enough, all right, okay, I'm listening, I'm going to do what I can. So the beds, um, don't remember those beds other than that I slept in them. I don't know if they were, they were comfortable or not, I can't remember. And then after that, I had... I was in another children's home before that. I don't remember the bed or the, the sleeping situation at all. So by the time I was five and six, I was starting to, I can kind of remember stuff a bit cl- more clearly from that time. When I was seven, I moved in with my dad and his new wife. And... We lived in this place where there was, I'm not sure, I think I might have shared the bed with my brother. I'm not 100% sure. But there was, there was, or it might be bunk beds again. I, I said, I'm not, I don't really know. But we weren't living there for long. And then we moved into a council house. I had my own bed. And my two brothers lived in another room, a bigger room, with bunk beds. So I had my own bed. And it was alright. I had a picture of Bruce Lee on the wall. I didn't know who he was. And that started me on the road to martial arts and stuff as I, when I got older. But um, yeah, I liked that little room. It was big enough for my needs. And then I... We moved to another house. When I was about eight. Because my little brother was born. Which meant... Oh. A carrier bag just fell on the floor. Made me jump. Yeah, we moved. My little brother was born when I was eight. So we had to move. Because there wasn't enough room. In the place for all of us. I mean, I suggested that one of my brothers moved out, but I didn't seem to, you know, it didn't get many votes. But I thought, you know, no one listens to my ideas. I said, the oldest brother, he can go, he can leave now. He's 12 now, he, well, he can go and get a job. My dad agreed, but no one else did. So then um, we moved to this bigger house. Which meant I had my own, we all had our own rooms. And I had a bed. Now, it might have been exactly the same bed as what I had before. It might have been, I don't know. But in my memory, it was comfortable. It was no, I had no issue with it. And I slept fine. And then I moved up to the top of the f- of the house, and yeah, I probably just had the same bed, so that was fine. So from the ages of, 
you know, nine or just before I was nine to the ages of 15. I imagine I probably just had the same bed for those years. I'm, it, there's a chance they might have got a different bed at some point, but I think it was the same bed. And then... I moved out. When the parents split up, I moved in with my stepmum, with my stepmum, my little brother, into my stepmum, my stepnan's flat. And there's not enough room there for all of us. So my little brother and his mum slept in one bed in a room. I slept in on a, uh, it's like this camping bed, like that you pull out. Uh, I slept on there in the living room for um, not yeah not shy of a year it wasn't it was for nearly a year and maybe a little bit less maybe ten months maybe nearly a year so I moved there and lived like that for that time so that was uh, not great as you can imagine. No privacy at 15. And then I turned to 16 and still no privacy. You know, it's not a good age to have zero privacy. And then I moved out there and got my own flat above the chip shop that I worked. And my dad's out of storage, he got my childhood bed. (laughs) Which was... I don't know. I, I, did he give me a childhood bed? Yeah, it was a single bed. I don't know why I had this image that I had a double bed, but I, I couldn't have done. Must have been a single bed. Anyway, I moved. I moved into this place, and it was lovely to have a bed again. It was nice. Uh, not ideal to live above where you work, you know. And the, my boss had access to the flat because he had one of the rooms was his office that was locked. Um, that he so he had to have access the whole time. And then uh, after living there for how long did I live there for? year I think I don't think I was there for that long I was there for so 1980 probably 1987 about April time I was living there until about April 1988 so it seemed like forever but it wasn't a long time. It's about a year. And then I moved into my dad's house for a short time and lived in his spare room. And there was a, a bed in there, a new bed and everything. So I slept in there. So that was a nice bed. It was an okay bed, you know, it was all right. Quite comfortable. But that was temporary. It was a temporary situation. I moved out of there. Within three months, I was out of there. And then I was living above, because I was working at the co-op uh, supermarket, and I started living above the co-op in a flat was rented out by the manager there and so I was living in a room on my own or you know separate to her she had her own room a bigger room I was in a smaller room but it was fine and the bed was fairly comfortable it was comfortable it was an okay bed proper bed and then she lost her job and we were evicted so I moved into a a 
another bed, another bed, another room, had a bed, can't remember that one, the next one I can't remember, uh, can't remember the bed, I stayed in, I stayed in my friend's mother's house for a little while, and she had a bed, the bed was fine, it was a nice house, and I was working, and I decided to go to Spain to live and work and I ended up just going for half the afternoon and I came back. So I'd kind of given, I'd, I didn't have anywhere to live then. So I, I stayed with a couple of people temporarily while I tried to find somewhere to live and someone that I'd met at work wanted me to move into their place and look after their daughter and take her to school in the mornings because they would do a night shift and in return they would let me live there and feed me but it involved sleeping on the floor I think another kind of uh, camper bed situation. So I was sleeping there. What they didn't tell me is they were going to be coming home during their lunch break. So they'd head off, start their shift at 10, so they'd probably leave about half nine in the evening till six. But they'd turn up at two in the, two in the morning, come in, turn the telly on, uh, because they had cars, so they, you know, it's only like a five minute drive. So they'd be home for about 50 minutes, 45 minutes, watching TV, music on, chatting, sometimes bring people home with them. And that was my sleep gone. That was, and then they'd leave and go back to work for three o'clock till six. So I had three hours chance to get some sleep for three hours and then I was woken up again early in the morning at like five past six and yeah it wasn't ideal it was and then the weekends when they weren't working I had to just stay up until they went to bed so I couldn't go to bed when I wanted couldn't sleep when I wanted so it was uh, not ideal and then kind of a backward step in a sense of living or sleeping in a, in a, you know, uh, what's it, like a camping bed, a fold up camping bed in a living room. I mean, I'm not even sure if I, I might have just been sleeping on the floor on a, on a like blow up thing. I can't remember. Either way, it wasn't ideal. So I moved out of there as soon as possible. And then I stayed in a couple of friends' places. And they had, uh, one person had two beds in one room. And it was a studio apartment. And I slept in one of those beds. So he put me up. Because uh, I started staying with him. Um, rather than go home. Because at least because when I was sleeping in the living room so the weekends I'd stay with him because I knew I'd be able to sleep during the night and so that was kind of perfect for me really at the, at the time and then from there I found a room to live in which was okay so I, and then I got another room And then I worked in a pub. And then I worked in that, you know, so yeah, I did different things. And I moved, you know, I moved into another place. I moved into my dad's for a little while, then I moved out again. And I moved into this other place where, when I was doing window canvassing. So that was one of the best times of my life when I was 18. 
I was working four hours a day and I was getting paid full-time money and I was just yeah living it was a very relaxed but I was enjoying myself for the first time really as uh, since I left school and then I moved out of there and moved in with a friend again living in the same room as him um it was he was renting a room but there was two beds in there so I slept in one bed he slept in the other one but going back to that other place I think I was in a double bed I think it was a double bed and but I had no television and it was the first time really that I'd had no television uh, for quite a few years and well, my whole life, because I'd always had television to watch when I was a kid, even if I didn't have my own. So I started listening to music in the evenings. You know, I'd work, I'd be out during the day, um, I'd be eating out, go to cafes and have a cooked dinner and stuff, and then I'd work, and then I'd go out in the evening and get something to eat out. Um, so I didn't have to cook, uh, just breakfast, that was it. And I then, so that was, I had this room and it was, it, was, it was right at the top of the house, but it was comfortable. It was a nice house, very nice house. So I lived there for a while. Uh, I ended up dating the, my landlord's daughter's friend. So I ended up dating her. So I got myself a girlfriend from living there. So that was okay. Then, so I moved again with a different friend, living in the room with him. Then we moved out of there together. We rented a house. Well, no, it was uh, two rooms in a house. One was a big room, um, like a living room that had a bed in as well. Um, and the other one was upstairs and it was just a bedroom. So I had the bedroom, he had the living room. But there was a bedroom as well, so um, he didn't have to wait up to go to bed or anything. You know, I never disturbed him or anything. But we used to have dinner in the evening, and uh, then he'd go to bed when he wanted. He didn't sort of wait up for me, and I was happy to go upstairs anyway because I've always always been okay living, you know, sleeping in a room, wherever really. And then I moved away. And I lived in, I slept again in the living room, but this time it was on a couch or settee for about, I don't know, a few weeks until I found a room, another room that I rented, and this was in London. And it was, it was an okay, it was a small room, wasn't tiny. Um, I mean, I had one room before that, which was so small, I'd go in there, and the, the bed was pretty much near the door. There was zero room for anything else but the bed. Seriously, it, was, it got really hot in there as well. And then I, I moved into this room, this little room, which I stayed in for a while. And it was okay. The bed, the, the bed was fine. Just a standard single bed. And then I moved back in with my dad's for a, a few months. Went back to do canvassing. And at one point I had two jobs. One night shift and one few hours in the evening. So I, you know, I had more money than I ever had in my life before. So that was quite nice. And then I moved out of his place to get myself a studio apartment. So I, And it was nice. It was an ex-holiday place. So I had my own bathroom, my own kitchen, nice living room with a double bed. I'm pretty sure I had a double bed in it. It was very comfortable. And it had a recliner chair and a television. It was like everything I needed was in there. It was great. Then I moved out of there and I moved into uh, a place that was just um, up the road from where I used to live as a kid 
It was in the same road. And that room was quite small and so hot in the winter. The heating was on all the time. So I had to open the window to let the heat out. And that was just a standard single bed. And then I moved out of there and I moved back to London again. And I lived in this room. And there was a single bed in there, just a standard. It wasn't very comfortable, but I got used to it. And lived there for about four years. And then I moved and I had another... I stayed in this place that it was sublet. So I was only there for a short time. I like. I think that was a double bed. It was nice. Very comfortable there. I liked that a lot, living there. But then we had to get out short short notice because it was a sublet. And then I ended up moving into a friend's house. But I got my own bedroom again, which is good. This time I had a double bed again, which is nice. It was really good. Very comfortable. So I was, I was pleased with that room. It wasn't a tiny room either. It was a nice sized room. And then we got evicted from there. Then I lived in Butlins. So I ended up sharing a room with someone. And the beds were single. And the beds... In my recollection, the beds were not very comfortable. Not very comfortable at all. Uh, Very squeaky. Very, 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 very squeaky. And so I lived there for a, a couple of months and then I moved back to London. Oh, in that in that meantime I also lived in London in Ireland for a little while. And I'm pretty sure I had a single bed, but it was cold because it was uh, sort of autumn time, but it was cold. Uh, but there was something lovely about it. It was fresh and it was new. And it was kind of exciting to be in a different country. And yeah, I, I had a lot of uh, good memories from that time. Some of them. And then I, yes, yeah, so I moved back to London again. But after Butlins, I moved back to London and I had nowhere to live. And... I knocked on my cousin's door and said, can I come back and live here? And she said, okay. So I lived in this box room. Because I forgot about that. I lived there before as well. And so I lived there. Yeah, I'm missing out a lot of different beds. It's hard when you've moved around as much as I have. It's hard to keep track of all the different beds. So this was a t- this was a really bad bed. It was basically a uh, like a child's bed that I was sleeping in. But what she, what she did, my cousin, she did bless her. It was nice. She actually bought me a normal single bed, which was you know comfortable enough. It wasn't wasn't great, but it was definitely way better because I didn't have springs sticking in my back anymore. I mean, at one point I was laying on my bed, I thought I'd had my nipple pierced. Seriously, I was like, oh no, what's happened? Um, so yeah, that was that was very small though, very small room. And I lived there for a few years and then, then I moved out, I was evicted. <laughs> and I moved to a different place. I had a double bed there. Big old double bed with storage underneath the bed. So I put all my books under there and those it, the weight was too heavy and it collapsed to the drawers. So really the, the storage is more for like bedding, not for actual things, I think. But the room was basically previously being joined together with another room. So it'd been knocked through. So there was a big, they'd filled it, the gap in with a door. But, not proper doors, more like grating doors, you know, so you could hear each other. So it wasn't ideal. 
Um, and luckily I didn't stay there for too long and I moved away from London and I found, I, I lived in a YMCA and it was a studio apartment, bedroom, kitchen, or living room with full bed as well, uh, kitchen and uh, bathroom, all inclusive. And I lived there, I moved three times within that building, but none of the beds were comfortable. They weren't comfortable. Uh, and then I moved into another place, but this time it was an empty room. And because I didn't have my own bed anyway, I, I bought this thing, I forget what it's called, but they used to be popular, and they're very uncomfortable, like these wooden things. Anyway, uh, I got rid of it and bought an actual proper bed. Well, first of all, I bought a mattress to sleep on, and then I bought a bed frame to put the mattress on. Um, and that was better. So it was a single bed, but it was a new bed, new mattress, and the very first bed I'd ever bought for myself. And then I moved into the Buddhist community and took my bed with me. So I had that bed there. And I kept that bed all the way until I moved again in 2007. Um, probably November, yeah. And I moved. And I lived in this place. I'm trying to think, where did I live? Yeah, it was like a studio, it was... It was like um, the college or university accommodation, but it wasn't really. They only rented to university students, but it wasn't, you know, wasn't owned by the university. And I lived in the smallest, tiniest little room with a single bed, and there was a tiny desk and a, you know, it's very tiny. And when I went, when I saw the other room, because there was two rooms and a bathroom in this little extension of the cottage, the other room was twice as big and had a double bed. And she only rented that out to women. Men, she rented out the tiny little room. So she clearly had some issues. And so I lived there for three years, I think, for the duration of my university course and then I moved out of there I was evicted from there so I moved out of there and I moved into it was just a normal room but it was an ensuite so I had everything but a kitchen and it was a big room as well so that was nice I had a double bed it was a nice place it was all right um, so I lived there for a year, moved out the first opportunity because I didn't like living in that house. Uh, the toilets kept not working, the shower kept leaking, and it was just, it was a bit of a weird place to live. Then I moved out there, moved into this tiny little dungeon room in the basement, and there was a single bed in there already. And the, you know, a set of tables and draw and chairs. There was no room for any of that stuff. So and there was a room with a kitchenette but a shared bathroom. So I said to my landlord, "Look, I want to get my own bed. Can you take that bed out? Because it was so uncomfortable. It was, it was really, really uncomfortable." So he, and I said, can you take the chair and tables away? Or chair and table and chairs, rather, away? Because there's no room. There's no room. It was, if you're on bed, you, you can actually touch either side of the, of the room. You know, it's very, very small. And then I moved out of there and I found, like, I moved into here. Uh, I brought my bed with me, 
just a little single bed and shortly after moving in maybe a month maybe a few weeks more than that I got my own bed a big double bed which was good quality silent night or something like that and I got that bed and it's probably the best bed I've ever had it's comfortable and it's big and it lets me stretch out and it's it doesn't moan about my weight or anything it's very 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 nice bed and I've had it since 2015 and it's still going strong it is in fact the favouritest bed I've ever had yeah it's nice So that's kind of the story of my beds. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. Lots of love. Bye.